lives together. Yet we also know that this new branch of this family tree will be strengthened and enriched by the love and the traditions and the knowledge of both of their family roots. We're gathered here today to celebrate the day of Thanksgiving, of gladness, of joy, and to celebrate life's greatest gift, love. Marriage is a celebration of love that two people share with each other so much they want to commit their lives forever together. Love is what brings us here together, and love is what we should remember as we're in this space. Matthew and Natasha, we're gathered here to witness your love and respect that you have for one another. May your lives always be blessed in truth and further in that love. Matthew, please join hands with your brother. You may be seated.
I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoings, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child, and I reasoned like a child. When I became man, I gave up my childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly. But then, face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully even as I am fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. The next poem was chosen by Natasha. It's called Cherish Every Moment. Cherish every moment that you have with a love, his or her smile, his or her laugh, the time you spend with him or her. Cherish every moment that you have with your parents and with your grandparents, you never know when they may be gone, gone forever. Cherish every moment you have with a friend. You never know when they'll leave. You should cherish everything, every moment, and every memory. The next quote was chosen by Matthew. We are made of particles that have existed since the moment the universe began. I like to think those atoms traveled 14 billion years through time and space to create us, so that we could be together and make each other whole. Leonard Hofstadter from the Big Bang Theory. <laughs> Clearly, there is plenty of sense of humor and talent in this family. <laughs> Matthew and Natasha, today we celebrate your lives as individuals. And we bestow our blessing upon you as you continue this journey together as a couple. Scripture tells us in Ecclesiastes, that two are stronger than one. When one falls, she will have another pick up. And that a cord of three strands is not easily broken. The two of you connected to God will know no end. Now, I know the two of you like to dance. In fact, it's part of how you met. Beyond the dancing and the Swiss and Mushroom Burger connection. I couldn't think of a better way to talk about what relationships are in this dance. In fact, in the ancient tradition, there was a word for the Trinity that was called parapoesis. It's where our word choreography comes from. It literally means the divine dance. It's the idea that God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit have joined in this worldly dance together. And today, and every day, God in that Trinity is inviting us to dance with Him. I love this image because it reminds me of the beauty of marriage. Remember that when you're a true partner with someone, you want to spend time with them. You want to connect with them. Just like in dance, when you two lock eyes with each other, there's this special moment of chemistry. And then as you start to move together to the music, each in your individual way, you merge together into one beautiful piece of movement. Dance has a thousand forms of the world. Fast dances, slow dances, aggressive dances, seductive dances, light and free dances, just like the days of our marriage. They're not all going to be foxtrot. Some are going to be more difficult and more tenuous on certain days. And each moment that you have the chance to dance with each other through life, may you look into your partner's eyes. May you hear the shared music of your day. 
and may you choose to dance together through whatever musical changes may come. Good dancers, like good marriages, take responsibility for making each other feel safe. They give the highest priority to tenderness, gentleness, and kindness. Never allowing anything to be more important than that partner that you've chosen to spend that dance with. Today we recognize that the two of you have joined this divine dance together, and God, with God, and that chord of three will not be broken. Dancing and love are beautiful partnerships. As was just read, Paul reminds us in his letter to Corinth that love is patient, it's kind, it's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It doesn't rejoice in any wrongdoings. It rejoices in truth. It bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. And it endures all things. See, love is the only way that we really know each other. So stand strong in this love, and your marriage will see you through whatever dances may come. And as Solomon says in Ecclesiastes, it's a chord of three. It's a dance of three. Invite God in. See, marriage is not only about being the right partner or marrying the right partner. It's about choosing to be the right partner. One of my friends always says, you hear it said that marriage is 50-50. I want to tell you he's wrong. Marriage is 100-100. We each give the fullness of ourselves to the others. So on that May your dance of a lifetime bring you as much joy as that first day when you saw yourselves dancing together in every moment since. Please join me in prayer. And may they dance with joy and beauty all the days of their life, being there for each other in every moment that comes. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. So Matthew. You will repeat after me, looking at her, not me. <laughs> this is the part where you're bowing your commitment to her, so we'll do it. Um, I'm Matthew. I'm Matthew. Take you, Natasha. Take you, Natasha. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to take care of myself. I promise to take care of myself. So that I can take care of you. I promise to be true to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. I will love and honor you all the days of my life. Natasha, you can after me. I, Natasha, take you to you to be my husband. I promise to take care of myself. So that, so that I can take care of you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. I will love and honor you. All the days of my life. These rings are a symbol of commitment. Binds these two together. There are two of them because there are two people standing before us, and each makes a contribution to one another's lives. As you join your lives together, please take your partner's ring and repeat after me. Natasha, I promise to you. Natasha, I promise to you. From this day forward. You will not walk alone. You will not walk alone. May my heart be your shelter. May my heart be your shelter. And my arms be your home. And my arms be your home. May God bless you always. May God bless you always. May we walk together through all things. May we walk together through all things. May you feel deeply loved. May you feel deeply loved. With this ring. With this ring. I give you my heart. I have no greater gift to give. I have no greater gift to give. I promise I will do my best. I promise I will do my best. And I feel blessed to call you mine. I feel blessed to call you mine. Be close to me.
Natasha, as you place this ring on Matthew's finger, please repeat after me. I give you my promise. I give you my promise. From this day forward. From this day forward. You will never walk alone. You will never walk alone. May my heart be your shelter. Be your shelter. And my arms be your home. May God bless you always. May we walk together through all things. With this ring, I give you my heart. I promise I will do my best. I will be blessed. At this time, they were chosen to light a unity candle. The unity candle, candle is a, a beautiful symbol of two families, each with their own light, coming together to join the light of the one. Please ride. 
For the first time officially, our bride and groom will be stepping in as husband and wife. Please give them a very special welcome that they will remember for many, many years. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Natasha and Matthew. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone, will please be seated. It's 
a bit of a tradition in our family to uh, to give advice to the new in-law based on our, our years of living with the sibling. Um, and, and that is also a chance for revenge for some bedwetting jokes that were told in my uh, But it just strikes me the depth of Matthew and Natasha's connection and seeing that these last years uh, that I'm going to turn that around and I'm going to talk about what I've learned uh, from Natasha about Matthew. Oh. Um, so first, let me get back to that great hair thing. <laughs> there is a, apparently a really great home hair dye that will take care of wing, male pattern greatness. She, she even offered me some, but I, 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 I'm choosing to grow old gracefully. <laughs> um, secondly, I, I, I learned that Matthew must, in fact, be a pretty decent dancer. Um, to, you know, when he first got into the social dance thing, I thought, huh, well, this is an interesting phase he's going through. Yeah. And, um, but to attract a woman as beautiful as Natasha, he must have some decent moves, right? Uh, or, or maybe she took some pity on him, I don't know. Right? So, uh, yeah, speaking of Natasha's beauty and brilliance, um, a lesson that I learned also is that if you are really, really good looking, Matthew will work really hard to learn various phrases. Uh, if you're really, really good looking and your English is not your first language, <laughs> Matthew will work very, very hard to learn uh, phrases in your mother tongue and, and pronounce them badly. Uh, so uh, I'm sure that his, his knowledge of computer programming languages maybe came in handy in this endeavor to, to, to take on yet another language. And speaking of his work, like he's just, so he's a software engineer. As Matthew's brother, I've, I've always felt that I need to be just present and, and just focused and, and when he's talking about his work. Um, you know, I just I feel like I, I need to be his person and hear his stories about what goes on or in, you know, the bulk of his, his work day. Um, the problem with this, if you ever talk to Matthew about um, his, his work, um, how to, how to put this gently? It's been known to cause narcolepsy uh, in, in both humans and dogs. Um, so, but what I learned from Natasha is that it's two things. One is that his stories about work might actually have a point. And the second thing is that you, when the when the computer jargon comes out, you just you can just cut to the chase. You can ask to say, hey, what's the point of the story? You don't have to answer. Um, and apparently they have a rule about this. Um, another thing is Matthew's, you know, always had a really uh, unique sense of humor. And until Natasha came along, I was I was pretty certain that um, to really appreciate that sense of humor, you had to be like a, a, a blood relation or a first degree <laughs> relative at least um, to really truly appreciate that. But what I learned from her is that there, there are, there's people in this world, or, or to, to qualify that a little bit, there is a person who also appreciates that, Natasha. Um, and I noticed that they laugh a lot together. And I think that that laughter is a sign of joy, and that joy a sign of deep love. And in the time leading up to their relationship, and in their relationship this, thus far, um, I have seen Matthew grow in wisdom. And that growth is owning his own happiness. Aww. And the lesson that I learned from Natasha about that is the depths and the sustainability of that happiness. Um, it's just gratifying beyond words to witness Natasha and Matthew's connection. And we are thrilled to have Natasha as a sister. You're just such a wonderful match for Matthew. To be sure, marriages are hard work. Our mom told me once, uh, marriages are not made in heaven. They come in kits and you build them together. And our family is blessed to have had a nearly perfect model of marriage builders, our grandparents. Our grandparents, Bill and Maurice, had hearts full of love that seemed ever present in the way that they treated one another and in the way that they made each of us feel special. Um, they had this just beautiful love and, and, and it matched their beautiful home. Last evening at the rehearsal dinner, my sisters presented Matthew with a, a painting of their, their home. Um, and that's, that's the hope.
hope that I have here, Mary, is that you capture some measure of that beauty in your life and in your home and in the lives of your children and someday grandchildren. So please raise a glass to Matthew and Natasha. May you have faith, hope, and love. Thank you so much. So, we have rules around this. We have rules around this from the bride and groom. Whoever yells Goitika or hits your glass, you have to kiss the person sitting to your right. It's a new thing, it's a new thing. <laughs> So when I first met Matthew, to be honest, I didn't know if I could hold a conversation with him. <laughs> uh, but as I learned to be more patient and understanding of like, who Matthew is, as Andy said in his toast, I learned that Kevin and I actually have a lot in common, and there's a lot I respect about this man. So, what else did I come up with? Um, but to go along with that, whenever I came over to visit my mom, I always heard a funny story that something Matthew did, or she always was laughing hysterically, or something happened at dance. And to me, what that meant was my mom was happy. And that's one of the most important things in my life to make my mom happy. And to have another person there to help along with that means a lot. So, welcome to the family, Matthew. Oh, it was lost on me. Bobby's 